it's interesting. Rockets love to be big. Mm -hmm. Everything works better. Uh, what do you mean by that? You've told uh, me that before. It sounds epic. What was it? <laughs> I mean, when you look at the kind of the physics of rocket engines, uh, and also when you look at parasitic mass, it doesn't, if you have, let's say you have an avionics system, so you have a guidance and control system, that is going to be about the same mass and size for a giant rocket as it is going to be for a tiny rocket. Mm -hmm. And so that's just parasitic mass that is very consequential if you're building a very small rocket, but is trivial if you're building a very large rocket. So you have the parasitic mass thing. And then if you look at, for example, rocket engines have turbo pumps. They have to pressurize the fuel and the oxidizer up to a very high pressure level in order to inject it into the thrust chamber where it burns. And those pumps, all rotating machines, in fact, get more efficient as they get larger. So really tiny turbo pumps are very challenging to manufacture. And any kind of gaps, you know, uh, are like be between the housing, for example, and the rotating impeller that pressurizes the fuel. There has to be some gap there. You can't have those parts scraping against one another. Mm -hmm. And those gaps drive inefficiencies. And so, you know, if you have a very large turbo pump, those gaps in percentage terms end up being very small. And so there's a bunch of things that, uh, that, that you end up loving about having a large rocket mm -hmm. and that you end up hating for a small rocket. But there's a giant exception to this rule, and it is manufacturing. So manufacturing large structures is very, very challenging. It's a pain in the butt. And so, you know, it's just, you know, if, you have, if you're making a small rocket engine, you can move all the pieces by hand. You can assemble it on a table. One person can do it. Um, you know, you don't need cranes and heavy lift operations and tooling and so on and so on. When you start building big objects, infrastructure, civil infrastructure, just like yeah. the launch pad and the, you know, all this. We, we went and visited. Yeah. I took you to the launch pad and you can see it's so monumental yeah it is um and so just these things become major uh undertakings both from an engineering point of view but also from a construction and cost point of view and even the uh the foundation of the launch pad i mean this is florida like isn't it like swampland like how deep you, you have, have to go to, you, uh, at cape canaveral yeah um in fact in most ocean you know right, most launch pads are, are on beaches somewhere yeah. on the ocean side because you want to launch over water for safety reasons, um, the uh, yes, you have to drive pilings, you know, dozens and dozens and dozens of pilings, you know, 50, 100, 150 feet deep to get enough structural integrity for these very large, you know, it's, it's uh, yes, these turn into major civil engineering projects. I just have to say, everything about that factory is pretty badass. You said tooling, <laughs> the bigger it gets, the more, the more epic it is. It Even, does make it epic. Yeah. It's fun to look at. It's yeah. extraordinary. It's humbling also, because your humans are so small compared to it. We are building these in enormous machines that are harnessing enormous amounts of uh, chemical uh, power, um, you know, in very, very compact packages. It's truly extraordinary.